Good evening and welcome to Chatbox with Sam. Tonight's guest is the lovely author and actress, Brandy Stilwell. Brandy, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. You are so welcome. Brandy and I have met in person. And I was honoured enough to be given her signed book. It's called None of This is Going According to Plan. And I think Brandy and I can share quite a few stories of how they don't. And there's Brandy's <laughs> signed book, which I'm very honoured to have. When I first met Brandy, she brought me the book over. Would you like to share a little bit about that, Brandy? Um, well, you know, m my dad used to introduce me to his friends as the daughter that had the black cloud that followed her everywhere that I went. Um, thank you. And um, I just had weird things that would just always happen to me that wouldn't really seem to happen to anyone else. Um, and usually embarrassing um, or um, just absolutely ridiculous. And so over the years, I had just always kept a collection of some of the, the more bizarre random things that had happened. And people would always be like, you need to write a book. Um, and then one day I had a publisher named John Booker like reach out to me and he was like, you know, I know you and I would give my right arm to publish this for you. So that's kind of how that came about. And, you know, so it was just a collection of all these stories and you know, initially the name of the book was called Jesus Hates Me, But My Mother Tolerates Me, 70 <laughs> Short Stories to Give You a Vague Idea Why. And everyone loved the idea of that, uh, except my mother. Uh, she vetoed it. And she's really the only person <laughs> allowed to veto and I would listen to. So that's where the name uh, None of This Is Going According to Plan came from. And then uh, the the... The funny thing is, you know, when you're um, the day that it went to the printer from the publisher, we had cut. I think it was it was ended up being 68 stories and uh, we cut it. We cut eight stories just before it went to the printer. Um, and then uh, so it ended up being 60 stories. So I have a cat that just decided to, to sharpen his nails on my leg. Uh, <laughs> That's, I have never one, a, that's never a good thing, Brandy. <laughs> no, oh, and um, I have another cat that doesn't have eyes. So Aww, even when yes. I'm sitting at the desk, she will, she might make a special guest appearance and come up behind me at some point. Um, and so uh, the funny thing is, so we sent the book to the print, the publisher sent the book to the printer. And then the printer in Tennessee was like, hey, so we've printed it out. Here's the FedEx tracking number and you sh you know you'll have this book in x amount of days and just look at it sign off on it and then it can go live to be sold and then days went by more days went by and then um john the publisher kept like like worse like he kept trying to track it through fedex and it was just missing it was gone and not according like, to plan no and i'm just like you know this is my first real book and this is going to be everything. And then FedEx lost it. It just, it disappeared. So the printer in Tennessee had to print another one, put it back in FedEx and send it to us. And so um, all of a sudden, like for the folks in Los Angeles, uh, it made national headlines that the trains, coming into Los Angeles for being robbed. Um, so my book was basically a part of a train robbery, <laughs> the great train robbery of right. 2021. <laughs> Brandy Stilwell lost, lost in space <laughs> on a train track somewhere. Because well, someone's having a good read, Brandy, for free. Well, you know, it was like all of a sudden it made national headlines that there was like thousands and thousands and thousands of packages that were just all along the, the tracks of downtown Los Angeles. And we were like, oh, my God, that's where my book is. And then um, eventually there was so much debris on the tracks that a uh, train derailed 
And we, I would like to say that it was my book that did it because it's not a thin book. It, it's like 400 and some odd pages. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's 60 stories. Yes, uh, it a is lot. It a lot for your money and a lot to take out you know to derail a train (laughs) i know and he's got some great illustration on there but thank god so in the end he got to he got to the printer and he got published and there's brandy on the back and it's got great illustration and you know the book is funny and it's lots of stories quite a few people might relate to so you should definitely go and buy it you can buy it on amazon right brandy and where else and, and barnesandnoble.com um and the great thing about the cover is there's uh there's a lot of easter eggs on the cover right. of um from different stories throughout the book <laughs> there's I've a go i've got to show it i just love it body. <laughs> sorry there's a ghost there's a sasquatch yes there's five dollar bills floating there's the, the generic cola, which there's Coca-Cola stories. Right. The Coke machine behind me came from my mother. So that, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, there's there's several Easter eggs on the, the cover of the book. As I said, I've met Brandy. She's a lovely person inside and out and intelligent. And she's also um, worked on a few productions. She was in The Family Guy. Would you like to share a little bit of details about that, Brandy? Um, I was the script supervisor. I think that was, I don't, I think that was my title. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I went to Family Guy when it was resurrected back from the graveyard, like season three after it had been canceled by Fox. And I can't even begin to tell you how many episodes that was. Um, but yeah, it was the, the amount of people and talent that I got to work through, that I got to work with at Family Guy was insane. And Seth MacFarlane. Yes. Um, I would sit in the record booth. It would be Seth and I, and the, uh, recording mixer, we'd be in one booth and then the talent would be in the separate booth the uh, sound booth behind us. And then of course you had the double window to see through to, to direct. Mm-hmm. Um, and so while Seth would be directing, I would be uh, taking script notes and uh, circle takes. That's awesome. That's great. And so, and you do voiceovers too, right? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I am with Atlas Talent in uh, Los Angeles. Um, but that, well, you know, I was the associate post producer for Mad TV for many years. And so I learned how to, like if Mo Collins or Alex Borstein wasn't available and I, you know, they're on stage, but we're trying to finish, you know, they could be shooting like a pre-tape on stage and I'm trying to finish mixing the show and get it laid back and sent off to the network so it could air in a f- um, two days. Um, and sometimes if I couldn't have, if I couldn't get one of the female actors to do a quick voiceover that had been rewritten, I would do a sound match. <laughs> it um, but do it and, uh, you know, just so we could, you know, finish at like two or right. three or four in the morning um, and then have a little bit of sleep before I have to be back in at work at 10 the next morning. Um, so that's kind of how I learned how to do that. Mm-hmm. And then other friends like having projects and stuff like that would ask me to jump in and um, read something or act something out or whatnot. Um, And then uh, at Family Guy, you would put the track together first before it would go to the artist for them to start boarding. And so if we couldn't have a guest actor wasn't couldn't wasn't wouldn't be available for a certain amount of time, then I would go in and just do voices to to do a placeholder, um, mm-hmm. and then just try and do it just like it would like whoever did it in the the table read or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a pretty good memory of like how this you know how the inflection was on this and then matching it, um, and then that would just be a holder until the uh, whoever was cast to play that part could come in and do it that's amazing you're a woman of many talents oh so many talents what a threat such a threat (laughs) 
You know Everybody the fear this. <laughs> <laughs> and she's got a good humour too. And karaoke. But I won't yeah. say much more. <laughs> if you were going to inspire the younger generation, what would be the main focus? Um, gosh. One of the things that I will always tell people is, especially now that we all have smartphones now, um, you have to finish your projects and you, you have to finish it. And, you know, as a writer, you can always go back to it, but, um, and you can go back to it clear up until it's shot. Um, but one of the biggest problems that I had back in my day was I called it my lazy Susan and I would have, I would have like five or six projects that I would be working on at one time. And I'd work a little bit on one, turn the table, work a little bit on something else, turn the table. And I kept doing that. But the problem with that was I wasn't finishing anything. So at no other time in my entire life was I around so many agents and managers as I was at Family Guy. And people constantly like, what do you have? Let me see your work. You're so funny. You're so funny. Let me see your stuff. But I didn't have anything done. I had so many projects, but nothing was done. And I've never had that opportunity again. So I would tell people, finish your shit and keep them in file, you know, organize right. them in yeah. your in your inbox. And if you know, you never know who's going to be standing in front of you at Starbucks or who's sitting next to you, um, you know, waiting you know, to be called into whoever's office. And, you know, we all have our smartphones and you can just pull, send it, send it, send it. Um, and that is like the biggest mistake that I made. And I would hope that other people would follow, follow my, don't follow my mistake and like learn from that. So yeah. that is where I would be right now if I could just finished my stuff. Oh. It, it just happens so often though, me at work too, you know, in my regular job, um, I, it, sometimes things get so overwhelming mm -hmm. that you can't focus to finish because yeah. you, you've got so much to do that they all yeah. need attention. So yeah. it's, and they're all priority. So which one do you choose first to finish? But it's a matter of priorita prioritizing things. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, I had a, a publisher in New York City that had reached out to me about a log line that I had pitched, but it was just something that had been in my head for two years. It was just this idea that was in my head. Mm -hmm. And of course, he was like, hey, is there any way you can get me a one sheet by Monday? And it was like, ugh. <laughs> you know, that's an opportunity. So you don't pass it. So you stop what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I spent the next two and a half days um, flushing it out, pacing back and forth. And Monday morning, I didn't turn in a one sheet. I may have turned in a two sheet. It was mm -hmm. a two sheet, but it's solid. And you know, the thing is, no matter what happens with that, it's, I'm thankful for it because mm -hmm it i did it it's done it's now i can pitch it but again it was just in my head bouncing around for two years but i had never flushed it out and then an opportunity kind of happened in front of me and it was just like i have to take it right. and again it gets passed on it gets passed on it's totally fine but it's done it's done yeah it's still over in my head it's on the page now so it's and now now Part of my arsenal so it's all good it's all good no matter what happens and you have to do that so sometimes you do have to stop and be like you know what i gotta get something done because if you don't you're never going to get ahead you'll never get ahead right and what about more voiceovers do you think you'll be doing more of them because i think you have the perfect voice for that you're so talented you um I, i'm kind of in trouble right now with my agency because i i i've I may have skipped, I have skipped a lot of auditions just because I'm kind of burning the candle at both ends right now with mm -hmm. just a okay. lot of things on my plate. Aww. I was at AHA at the Hollywood Bowl the other night and I may have fallen asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm guilty of going to the cinema and falling asleep in there. 
yeah halfway and my through the film I'm, I'm, I, <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i've been in a work meeting before years ago and uh i woke up halfway through because we were watching something that was really important and i couldn't keep my eyes open <laughs> so <laughs> it happens it's when your body wants to sleep it needs to sleep <laughs> yeah yeah i have like two more weeks to go of getting stuff done and off my plate and then i'm like i'm just i'm just gonna sit on my couch and probably stare at the wall um and i will be the happiest person on the planet oh bless so. you well do that you you rest brandy because i know you're always busy and you're doing something so um and i can relate and if you can take a step one back breathe relax you can do that you can do yeah. it just find the time to do it what was the inspiration for you to be working within the industry writing and do you think that come from childhood or did someone inspire you growing up well you know um as a kid my dad if like my mom was in a store shopping and I was done and bored. So I'd go sit out in the mall with my dad. And my dad, as people would walk by, he would be like, tell me who this, tell me who is this person? Uh, who is that? What, what kind of car do they drive? Uh, what personality, you know? Um, and it would be like kind of profiling people, but you know, you were never allowed to be mean. It wasn't, it right. wasn't anything like that, but it was about being creative. And it's okay. like, he drives an El Camino and he has a pet raccoon named Gary. Um, <laughs> and so I guess that's kind of like where the creative came from. And then since I always had so many random, bizarre things that would happen to me, my friends would always be like, you know, fuck Seinfeld. We're, we're still well. Stillwell. We want still well. And um, I mean, because even like in New York City, I could, I could just run to the park to, to grab a sandwich um, and come back and just be covered in like egg salad. People would be like, what happened? And I'm like, well, I picked up a sandwich. I only ate half of it and then tried to give it to a homeless person. And then they got angry because they don't like egg salad, apparently. So they chucked <laughs> it. <laughs> no, I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> yeah. and, and I've told this story before, but it's like, I can get up to go you know there was one time i was with some friends and i just got up to go use the bathroom and i came back absolutely soaking wet and everyone's like you were gone four minutes what happened and i'm like i didn't see the 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 person had somebody had been mopping in there and i didn't see the sign i hit the water and went sliding on my back underneath the bathroom stall making eye contact and um, eye contact with some random woman on the toilet <laughs> Um, like, I'm trying to like grab part of the stall, and, like, <laughs> uh, and, like, okay, I'm gonna wait until I get home now. <laughs> oh, Brandy! Oh no, you! I tell you what, I I love uh, talking with you. You're so funny. And by the way, Brandy's this funny on the phone too. It's never stopping. It's never ending, and it's a continued story that I'm sure there has to be a book to. There has to be. And There's actually, gotta be. <laughs> it, is. it it has. It has been greenlit for a sequel. Um, awesome. And you know how there's there's a movie years ago called um, um, I know what you did last summer. Um, mm -hmm. And then the sequel was I still know what you did last summer. Um, so the sequel is still none of this is going according to the plan. <laughs> it may not be grammatically correct, but that's fine too. No, um, but that's pe perfect. Well, and like I said, I, we cut eight stories like right before it went to the printer. Mm -hmm. And I've probably um, jotted down like another 30. And I would say there's like 15. I have 15 of them written out. And I just, again, time. I have to find time. Yeah. <laughs> to... could, you, could you not put them eight stories that you took out? Didn't you mention once that you're going to put them in the new one? You could do You them. know, I think. Two of them, I think, two of them I put in, but there were six that I was just like, you know, I don't know if it's book, they're book worthy or not. I mean, right. but you can have a story and it's like, whatever. And I don't want it to be just whatever. I want it to be funny or moving. Um, and of course, you know, I mentioned in the first book, mm -hmm. uh, I had, 
I think I mentioned like ghosts like once or twice, um, which I make a comment about, like I could write a whole other book on my ghost stories. <laughs> so I think there's some ghost stories are going to show up in oh, that one. They're not hilarious or anything, but they're just like the fuck, you know? <laughs> and it's like, you know, I'm not drunk, not, you know, not on drugs, but, you know, I've had that antenna. Paranormal of, activity. Yes, I've had that. I've, I've, I'm like an antenna. And then, you know, my mother is the same thing. You know, mm-hmm. she has the same ability. And there's been times where I've been like, um, hey, um, just nonchalantly, uh, do you see, see then she's like, yes, I, yes, yes, let's go. <laughs> so, <laughs> You know I'm not crazy, and I've had exes. And, I believe in the paranormal too, so yeah, I don't. Think. You know, and I've had cats that are like, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm seeing this, but and you look over at the cats, and they're just, you know, gravitating. Hey, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, all right, well, I'm not crazy, and I'm not the only one here right now that's seeing it. So well, just, they say cats are very, you know, the Egyptians really worship the cats, and they say they're <laughs> very, they're very, very on the other plane. You know, but there's a truth about that. So, and I, I believe in all that too. So it, people just don't believe because some people only believe what they see, physically see themselves. And mm-hmm. if they don't see it, they don't believe it. And, uh, you know, that's okay. That's okay. I do. And that's it. <laughs> you do. And that's it. And like, take it or leave it. If you don't but, like it, then skip that chapter. <laughs> but they're the first ones in the movies watching that paranormal activity or watching that spooky film where there's paranormal activity they're the first ones there because they're still inquisitive so yeah. that's why it's good to write about it because people still like to read and see and yeah. something the mysterious you know what, what we can't explain how has music influenced your life i mean as a kid uh we you know we lived in the country in the middle of nowhere um but my mom had this am radio so we could pick you know you always hear stories about how and you know you're you're from england so this you this, you may not understand this part but it's the coast the east and west coast uh the wave goes inward and so kansas being in the middle was always the last place to catch on uh <laughs> fashion, music hairstyles you name it but we had um this am shortwave radio that we could pick up radio stations out of chicago so my sister and I were all about, you know, the British new wave. And um, it was all about, you know, Depeche Mode and New Order and Pet Shop 80s. Boys. Yes. Yes. And yeah, the 80s. that was, that was like our everything. And, um, you know, where everybody else was, you know, John Cougar, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. You know, um, and I don't get me wrong. I love the melon camp. I do. Um, but it was, you know, where everybody was all about where I was from country music and, um, uh, you know, soft rock or yacht. We call it yacht rock now. <laughs> it was all about, you know, it, 80s European music so it was, uh, the, it was the best though so I can't blame yeah. you trying to levitate towards that and try and go to us getting the coat hangers out trying to get to Chicago music <laughs> yeah exactly here I am climbing up the t- tallest tree in the yard with the AM radio to get a better <laughs> yeah yeah that was me. so what's your favorite 80s band um, I would say back in the day it was Duran Duran, but now I would probably say Depeche Mode. Yeah. Uh, or, well, or U2. I mean, I've had, you know, I don't know how many times I've seen U2 now. I've I've seen them, um, it's well into the late 20s, early 30s. Right. Sometimes I've seen them and I've seen them um, uh, when they were a guest on Saturday Night Live because one of my friends was a writer and then I've also flown to Hawaii by myself to see them. <laughs> oh, bless you. That's yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I loved, I thought the old, like David Bowie. You oh know, my God. He was awesome, you know. Love and Prince. David Bowie. Love he, David Bowie. We had some great music. We had just, mm-hmm. You know, it was just great. In England, we had the discotheques when I was growing up in the 80s and we were all there with the big hair and the silver green hairspray. Shh, 
half a can in one night. <laughs> yeah. It was good fun, the 80s was, for me. Yeah. yeah. So, do you sing or play any instruments, Brandy? Um, I have a violin. I actually have two violins that I've named Mr. Farnsworth from uh, Heaven Can, the movie Heaven Can Wait with Warren Beatty. <laughs> Um, and I used to have a guitar, but I'm terrible. I mean, I'm not like no one would win if I had to play anything. So I would never do that for anyone. And I love me some karaoke. However, I cannot carry tune very well, but the thing is I own it. And that's mm -hmm. the huge difference. Um, yeah. it's, you know, if you're singing and you're, you're, you're terrible and then you're questioning yourself. Nobody wants to hear that, but I'm terrible and I absolutely own it. And I give 110% performance like I'm meatloaf. And <laughs> <laughs> sell it. Uh, like a bat out of hell. <laughs> yeah, like your ears, your ears are like bleeding and feral dogs are running in. But if you were to like not listen, you'd be like, wow, she's an amazing performer. And she's amazing um but then you turn the volume up and you're like oh shit wow uh, <laughs> <laughs> i'm going to karaoke with you next time i'm in los angeles yes. Yes. <laughs> would you would you <laughs> yeah absolutely um and I, like i said i will sell it i will sell the hell out of it uh awesome you know, and then you watch the people in the audience they're like oh she's going back up um <laughs> Look, I don't smoke, but I might take it up and go take a break outside really quick. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that bad. You know what? It's there for the laugh, right? And mm -hmm. you, you've you got one of the most beautifulest gifts. It's like the Irish thing. You, you laugh at yourself, with yourself, and, and to others. Mm -hmm. And you bring humour to... So that itself is enticing and and it radiates from you brandy it's oh. it's a light that shines from you and um i can't see anybody wanting to leave the room in your presence to be honest <laughs> oh you'd be so. surprised <laughs> <laughs> yeah could you please share the story about your cats and the name for your cats um i have five urns of mildred well and then of course we can go back to my mom's house for a bit Pet cemetery. Um, but I have Mildred, Senator Pete, Professor Betty White, Astronaut Major Healy, and did I, I think I said, did I say Senator Pete? You did. Um, okay. Oh, oh no. Uh, Shaft. Detective Shaft was the other one. So there's them. There's in the other room. Um, and then I have writer producer Liz Lemon. Um, from 30 Rock. <laughs> okay. um, and then when astronaut Major Healy passed away just over two years ago, and he was like 16 and a half, um, it was very sad. It was the pandemic, you know, we're in the middle of the pandemic. Liz is like looking for um, her brother and you couldn't just go into a, a, an animal rescue or the a, a pound or shelter like you could before and because we're in the middle of a pandemic so every time you had to do you had a you actually had to adopt a cat online or you did in LA and then you could then you could go in and meet it which you know it's like but how do you know if you're gonna bond with them so it was like a weird thing and every single time I would click on a cat to like okay I'm gonna I, fill out the paperwork for this cat, they would be gone. They would have already been adopted. And then, you know, three, four in the morning, Liz is still crying, looking for Astro. And, you know, it was just, it was gut wrenching. And I, it was terrible. It was just really terrible. And so I found this cat, her name was Paintbrush and she only had one eye. And um, she had had glaucoma and ulcers and they had removed it. And she was just beautiful. Um, and I clicked on her and I filled out the paperwork. And then 
um, went to check the website like two days later and she had been adopted um, and nobody had reached out to me and I'm devastated. So I went to the local PetSmart and I, I knew that there was a rescue group coming in that day. So I went to get there before they got there and they had just set up they had two kittens. This woman had grabbed, had the little girl, I had the little boy, and I fell in love with him. He looked like a, a bat because his ears were gigantic and he had a tiny head. So I ended up adopting him, and his name now is Count Laszlo Cravensworth, a.k.a. Jackie Daytona, because I love Matt Berry. I love Matt Berry. Mm-hmm. And, um, of course, Count Laszlo Cravensworth, a.k.a. Jackie Daytona, is from what we do in the shadows. Mm-hmm. Um And so um, I had him for like 11 days and Liz and Laszlo were getting along great. Everything's wonderful. And then the rescue group uh, reached out to me 11 days later, uh, basically saying, hey, congratulations, you have successfully adopted Paintbrush, the one-eyed kitty. And I'm like, wait, what? Um, And I'm like, no, I can't have three cats. I'll be single forever. I didn't, know, I didn't know how to, you know, I would work, I know me and I would worry about this cat for the rest of my life. And yeah. so I went and adopted her and her name now is Socialite Maura Rose because I love me some Catherine O'Hara from right. Shoots. Um, and I, so I had Maura for 34 days and her one eye swelled up and um, we did everything we could to save it. Took her to an uh, an eye specialist in Alhambra and uh, they had to take it. So now I have a cat that doesn't have any eyes. Oh, bless her. Yeah, I know you've told me. She's awesome. And she's such a fantastic cat. I mean, I can be sitting here at my desk and you hear a weird crinkle noise and she has like a crinkle ball in her mouth heading towards the bathtub. Yeah. And she'll go to toys in the bathtub because she can control the role. So every night when I go to take a shower, the first thing I do is have to make sure there's no toys in the tub. Um, but she's so incredibly smart and she's an amazing goalie. Yeah. Uh, and it's just with the crinkle balls and she can stop anything. She's fantastic. See, she's yeah. got the other senses took over. Yeah. Just I shows mean, you, you don't always have to put a cat down, do you? You can no, still love no, it. No. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, even with all of that, I have I have never lost the cat lottery. So I'm good. It's good. Oh, and I've still got Zeus. He's oh. still running around. He's huge, 85 pound <laughs> that I adopted. Mm-hmm. Out of all the charities there are in the world, which one would you choose to advocate for and why? Uh, Kitten Rescue Los Angeles. Um, because one of my best friends is on the board of Kitten Rescue and they do phenomenal things. I mean, they take in possums, they take in elderly cats. Oh, and the thing is, if you, if you get a cat, if you adopt a cat from Kitten Rescue and let's say, you know, 15 years from now, you're killed in a car accident or what you've passed away and your family doesn't end up taking that cat kitten rescue will take the cat back Good. even after 15 years and they're just a wonderful organization so anytime i um have spare change i always kick it towards kitten rescue los angeles because there's some incredibly amazing human beings that work there and it just, you know, it's disgusting that people just dump their animals or mm-hmm. they'll move out of their apartment or their house and leave, leave them. Leave them. It's just, it's disgusting. And you can't save all of them, but what the hoops that these people go through are incredible to save animals. And like I said, they even, they'll take, they've even, they rescue dogs. So yeah. they're, they're good people and it's a good organization. That's awesome. Okay, Brandy, if this was the last time you could ever speak to someone in public and get a message out there, what would you say? Um, don't be so hard on yourself. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you get knocked down seven times, get back up eight. Oh, thank you so much. And is there anything that no one has asked you in the interview that you would like them to ask you? 
I don't think so. <laughs> That's okay. Most people say I that. mean, I don't, I haven't laid, laid awake at night like, oh, if only someone would ask me about blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> Too. <laughs> yes, it's, I should change the question to what do you not want to be asked in an interview? <laughs> I should ask, change, swap it around, change it up, something. <laughs> so, um, if people wanted to contact you, where can they find you? Um, I am on, <laughs> uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. Brandy, have you got any last words that you'd like to say to the viewers today? Um, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it and for spending this hour with me. Um, and you can buy uh, None of This Is Going According to Plan on Amazon.com and Barnes and & Noble. And I also created um, the character Sasquatch Detective for DC Comics and you can you can buy Sasquatch Detective on uh, Amazon as well. well. Thank you so much, Brandy. So I'm going to say good night and thank you very much, Brandy Stillwell. Thank you for having me. Thank you. You're Bye. welcome.